It's Friday, January 25th. I'm Paul Hukalak. Welcome to TV7.ca News. Today, we talked to Mayor Kathy Heron about the recycling program. Paperless utility billing is on its way. And a local charity has an important event planned for this weekend. But first... Well, July 1st may seem like an agonizingly long time from now. However, the city is alerting you now ahead of their move this summer to monthly paperless billing for all utility bills. This means residents will need to register for e-billing, a service the city already provides, so their utility bills can be delivered via email. Monthly paperless billing was inspired by several factors, including resident requests, council direction, and the technology and meters used for the city's water meter replacement program. If you'd still like a paper trail, you may still choose to receive your utility bills in the mail, but you'll have to pay. Don't worry though, because residents without home internet access can apply for the exemption program starting on April 30th. Residents in the exemption program will continue to receive mailed paper utility bills and no fees will be charged. You can register for e-billing on the city's website. Tomorrow is the Plugged In Community Center's presentation of Brainchild at Service Place. This annual event offers children in need the opportunity to discover a love of learning through multifaceted activities and community interactions. 100 children will be led by adult volunteers through an exciting day including an anti-bullying program, mindfulness, cooking, interactions with a first responder, as well as movement breaks, amusement, and other activities. Participants will munch on morning and afternoon snacks and will be presented with a swag bag. Guest experts will also be there to create hands-on academic fun. The goal of the event is to provide an inclusive and supportive environment for all children to experience uh, success and to continue to build their curiosity and learning. Joni Bokenfor, from the Plugged In Community Centre explain more. This is a brainchild event. It's an event where we take a hundred youth that are segregated from the community somehow. So they have some kind of factor that's um, preventing them from participating in um, activities outside of school, say. So um, poverty, um, sometimes children that are affected by autism, all kinds of different things that would prevent them from accessing their community resources easily and effectively. We have an anti-bullying um, program, we have a cooking program, um, there's a fireman that's volunteering to come speak to them about some careers, and then we'll have some physical activity in the gyms. She went on to explain what the Plugged In Community Centre does. We're a charity that's promoting inclusion, just removing segregating factors from, like I said, people prevent prevented from accessing community, um, whether it's seeing a friend for coffee, being able to go to the bank with your autistic child, um, or at your child affected by autism, uh, mental health problems, we've discussed, um, we've had tons of community conversations this year about mental health and how we can support people that are dealing with that this year. For more information about this important local organization, go to PluggedInCenter.com. Today on Let's Get Fit, Michelle Parker helps us get into shape. Today we're going to focus in on strength training. The Canadian Physical Activity Guidelines recommends adding muscle and bone strengthening activities using major muscle groups at least two days per week. Now while lifting weights is certainly a muscle and bone strength activity, there are so many more possibilities. Find one that you most enjoy, for if you enjoy it, you're more likely to repeat it and ultimately incorporate it into your lifestyle. Today I've laid out a few tools that I like to use for our own body weight as our weight. Now suspension training with our TRX, We've got all core all the time as its model. It works your biceps, triceps, legs, core, and so much more. The Liberate Equalizers, which we have over here in our yellow and green, they're originally built to help a client learn how to be able to do a chin-up, and now used for such a big variety of activities, both for cardio and for strength. Then there's the BOSU, that blue half ball that's over there, a great tool for adding balance, stability into your training. And then a bench, or simply your kitchen chair, of course, is a great tool as well, too. And as always, there's also you. Think about squats, push-ups, burpees, not to mention running or going out and jumping rope. All right, going into today's move of the week, we're gonna be building muscle endurance with our burpee. 
Now the burpee works that upper body, arms, chest, as well as lower body, quads, hamstrings, and there's many different options with it. There's the dead man burpee, there's the jump lunge burpee, there's the double burpee, lots of variations once you get in there. Today I'm gonna to be showing you that basic burpee and we'll get into that here first. So again, remember this is a cardio move as well as a strength building move. So with our burpee, our hands are coming down into that plank position, adding into that push up, jumping those feet forward and jumping back up to the sky. So let me slow that down for you. We're gonna put our hands down on the floor. We're gonna jump our feet back, go into our push up, press back up, keeping that core engaged. Feet come back towards the hands, pressing through those feet as we stand back up and jump into the air. Now, if you're looking for some variations, we're gonna take this down and we're gonna actually walk our feet back, potentially come down to your knees if that's what's right for you, and then lower that chest towards the floor, pressing back up, walking those hands back to your feet and finishing by raising those hands up. Now for anybody that there wants a challenge, here we go. Hands down, jump back, push up, bring it in, jump it up, and then you can add in things like your reverse lunge before you go back in and do it all over again. For TV7.ca News, I'm Michelle Parker. <laughs> Well, if you were quizzed, would you know what the five R's of recycling are? Mayor Heron took to her Facebook page again this week in response to a newspaper article alleging the, quote, departure from St. Albert's well-established commitment to environmental stewardship. She sounded off, reminding residents that her government is focused on, quote, reduce, reuse, rot what we can, recycle, and finally, to recover and goes on to say that the city is leading the low-carbon footprint conversation. She references the city's green energy, locally grown, and organic produce efforts. The mayor also challenges the province, producers, and St. Albert residents to, quote, improve when attempting to 100% diversify away from landfills. TV7.ca also reached out to the mayor this week for additional comments on the contentious issue. I could take some responsibility, or the cities of Alberta and Canada can take some responsibility in that we uh, we weren't following the path of where our recyclables were going. We were sending it to GFL and washing our hands of it. I think it's time, and I was trying to say in my article, it's time to not just think about recycling. We need to talk about the entire hierarchy of of zero waste, and it really does start with reduction. So the city of St. Albert is going to start with a with a strategy on how we can ask residents to voluntarily reduce everything. And there's lots of options. There's, um, you know, there's Bulk Barn. You can take your bags in and fill up with flour or cereals at Bulk Barn and reuse those. Um, you, c you can buy eggs in cardboard versus the plastic or styrofoam. So there are choices. Some, I, I will... Uh, agree that some things there aren't choices. Um, I don't think you can get blueberries or raspberries in anything but a clamshell. Mm -hmm. So my family has just stopped buying blueberries and raspberries until a solution is found. The city's responsibility, quite honestly, um, I think of all the levels of government, the cities across Canada have done the best job of, of being responsible about zero waste. We offer the programs, and St. Albert has an acceleratedly good program because we offer the different levels of garbage pickup. So we reward people who who really generate very little garbage. The smallest bin I think costs a dollar a month. So you get a you get a huge reward if you're um, conscious about your your footprint. And if you still had questions or concerns about this business of recycling. You can join the City of St. Albert's Waste and Diversion Programs team for a presentation about recycling and waste reduction. Next Saturday, February 2nd, from 2 to 3.30 p.m. at the St. Albert Public Library, come learn about changes to the Blue Recycling Bag Program and discover new tips and tricks on how to reduce waste at home. Drop-ins are welcome, or you can register on the St. Albert Public Library website. Is your life full of clutter? Stephanie Cordova is a professional organizer and she is this week's Business Spotlight.
Stephanie Cordova and I'm a professional organizer. I like to help clients get rid of the clutter in their home, which is typically creating some chaos for them, preventing their productivity. Um, and so I come in and help them make some decisions on what do they need to keep, where could things go, could we create a system perhaps for some of their stuff so that it's easily easy to find because there's a lot of people and there's statistics about organizing all over the internet and all sorts of organizations that will give you lots of statistics. People spend years of their life looking for things and so that's less time you're spending with your family, doing things that you love. I, well, I think the goal in life is to have a, a work life or a life-life balance, right? A family life balance, I guess, would be a good way. So um, I think people, if you're trying too hard to be organized all the time, you're gonna be stressed out. If you're never organized and the clutter's overtaking your life, you're gonna be stressed out. So a balanced home would be where you're trying a little bit of both. Sometimes you have your relaxed days and sometimes you have your days where, or your moments even, or your 15 minute block of time where you're organizing and purging and putting things back in their system, like where they belong. So if you have a junk drawer, maybe take all those things that are piling up in your purse and put them back in the junk drawer, for example. So that's what a balanced home is all about, is realizing that there are no, there, there should not be for peace of mind extremes, where it's all or nothing there should be a little bit of a happy medium. A lot of times people call me because they feel overwhelmed or they don't know how to start. Um, they have so much stuff and they maybe don't know where it goes, right? So they wanna donate stuff, but they don't know the best organization for it to go. So I can do a whole bunch of things with them, but typically I work alongside the client, help them make some decisions because I can't make decisions for clients. I'm not gonna decide what needs to be donated and what needs to be kept, what needs to be filed and what needs to go in recycling. That's not for me to decide. So I come in and um, help them just make decisions. Ray Mussel's numbers have finally come up, literally. The St. Albert musician hit the December 15th Lotto 649 jackpot and has pocketed a whopping $7.9 million. Muscle's magic and the winning numbers were 11, 12, 22, 36, 46, and 47. The December 15th draw was worth a total of 15.8 million, and Muscle will split the total right down the middle with an Ontario winner. We hit the streets to ask you what you would do if you won the lotto. Good afternoon, I'm Lisa Rufiange on location for TV7.ca. In light of recent events with a St. Albert citizen winning $7.9 million, we are posing the question to the general public today, what would you do if you won the lottery? What would we do? I think we would uh, buy a bigger bed yeah. so we could sleep, sleep better, <laughs> sleep more. Um, $7 million bed, ladies and gentlemen. Yeah. Yeah, a fancy one that reclines and everything. So tell us what you would do if you won the lottery. Become self-sufficient. In, in what way? Financially? Off the grid? Every way. Every way? Um, I would probably pay off all my debts and my family's debts and then travel the world. Um, I'd help out my family. I have an idea in my head. If it was a million dollars or even greater, I'd help them out. What would I do if I won the lottery? Reporting to you not from the beautiful Peron district, but instead from an undisclosed beach in the tropics. I'm Lisa Rufiange. Well, are you a first time home buyer? Today on Financial Focus, Crystal Lucier talks about the Home Buyers Program. I want money. Many people have heard of the Home Buyers Plan. CRA has some regulations in place for first-time home buyers that are very beneficial and we usually recommend that you take advantage of the program. Home Buyers Plan is run through CRA um, but offers you the ability to pull some RRSPs for first-time home buyers. By saying first-time home buyers, um, it can be you or it can be your spouse. So if you've purchased a home before and you have a new spouse that has never used the program, you may be able to find a way to use the program. And we recommend that you talk to a professional before going ahead and doing that. Um, if you're buying or building a home, you can use the home buyer program. You use your RSPs by withdrawal to a maximum of $25,000. 
Um, they can't be locked in and they have to be in an RSP program for more than 90 days to be able to pull them for home buyer income. Um, the amount that you pull from your RSPs once you use them to purchase your home have to be repaid by recontribution to your RSPs over a number of years in the program. If you don't repay them, that money then gets taxed as income on your income tax return at the end of each year. Home Buyer Program is a beneficial program run by CRA and uh, you'd benefit from taking a look at it if you haven't already. I'm Crystal Lucier with TV7.ca. I want money. And Belrose Composite High School will be presenting Chicago in a few weeks at the Arden Theatre. You can enjoy the musical on February 5th through the 7th at 7 p.m. Along with the evening shows, they will also be performing a matinee at 11.30 on the 6th. We spoke to one of the stars in this musical about why productions like this are so important for students. Well, I mean, it gives, like, like having these classes and having the kids going out to actual theaters and performing there gives them kind of sort of like a taste of what it's like if they actually went into the profession. Like they get to see firsthand what all takes. You get to have the different crews for costuming and you get to see the tech crew in action and everything. You, you really get set in perspective of how much work it actually takes to put on one of these shows. Help support the young talent and promote the arts in our community by getting your tickets at the Belrose High School office. The evening shows on Wednesday and Thursday night run you $20, and the matinee and the opening night tickets are only $10. As always, TV7.ca does have a couple of tickets to give away for your matinee showing. If you'd like to enter, please send us a Facebook message or email us at news at TV7.ca. And that is it this week. If you have any community events or news you'd like to share with our viewers, please send us an email at news at tv7.ca. And always, from all of us here at tv7.ca, I'm Paul Hukalak. Have a great week.